Hare Krishna devotees, this is Seven Humble Obeisances of Glory Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to morning Bhagavatam class. This morning the class will be on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 10, Verse 17, and the chapter is entitled The Departure of Lord Krishna to Dwarka. The class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada and all glories to you. Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam 11017. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sita Ta Patram Jagarha. Bukta Dhamma Vibhu Sitam Ratnadandam. Buddha Kesa Priya Priyata Masyaha. Sita Tapatram Jagraham Mukta Dhamma Vibhu Sitam Radha Dandam Buddha Kesa Prita Prita Tamasyaha Translation At that time, Arjun, the great warrior and conqueror of sleep, who is the intimate friend of the most beloved Supreme Lord, took up an umbrella which had a handle of jewels and was embroidered with lace and Pearls, hmm. gold, jewels, pearls, and valuable stones were used in luxurious royal ceremonies. They're all natural gifts and are produced by hills, oceans, etc. By the order of the Lord, when a man does not waste his valuable time in producing and wanting things in the name of necessities, by so-called development of industrial enterprises, we're now using pots of guta percha instead of metals like gold, silver, brass, and copper. These, they are used using margin instead of purified butter and one fourth of the city population has no shelter. Magyan timirandasya kinanjana sulakaya chaksu militamyena Tasmai Shri Guravina Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutai Shri Makti Bhakti Veya Antaswami Nityanamane Who works there? Namaste Sarasvati Veya Gauravani Pujani Ne Never Say Sasunya Vahi Pasyatya Ne Sitaamani Panchakalpadu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Vedacha Pititaram Bhagavani Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha Daisi Krishna Chaitanya Agu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadapar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so here we see contrast and we see how um, everything is provided by nature. Mm -hmm. It says nature's gifts such as pearls, valuable stones, jewels, gold, they all come by way of the hills, the oceans. It says, there is one statement, you can read it. It says that uh, under a particular astrological constellation when there is rain during that astrological constellation when the rain hits onto the head of a snake it produces jewels a jewel when the a when the, when the rain hits an elephant it produces ivory and all and other jewels also and when the rain goes in the ocean it produces pearls which are taken by oysters so by god's natural arrangement through his energy he's providing various types of valuable metals as we see here arjun 
this is 5,000 plus years ago. He had an umbrella with jewels, lace, and pearls. Um, nowadays, it's Prabhupada right here <laughs> in the purport. Um, now we have silver metals instead of gold, silver, brass, and copper. We have Guta Percha. I think Guta Percha is aluminum. Or, huh? It's actually, we just looked it up and it's plastic. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? We have made so much progress. Um, society is proud that they said that we are now more advanced. Where's the advancement? <laughs> Instead of butter, we get margarine. Now we don't even get margarine. We get what is called uh, vegan butter, which is some creation. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like and uh, and one fourth of the population has no shelter. That's in some cities. Some cities it's even higher percentage. So you know, and we're so proud of our advancement in civilization here. But where's the civilization? Where's the advancement? People could produce their own. Uh, food, now people have to buy food that's full of chemicals. <laughs> people would live outside and breathe fresh air. Now all you breathe is smog. <laughs> so there's a whole long list of deficiencies that have come up with the, the modern age of advancement called technology. It's just some different way of using fancy words to say that uh, we are, we are, uh, we got more things, but we're more, we're suffering also more. <laughs> That's all. Uh, because they've neglected nature, they exploit nature, they think nature is their servant. So the society just tries to drill holes in the ground to get oil, various precious metals, they blast their way through various types of earth in order to get natural gas, which, call when, which when they try to take it, it goes into the water supply and people don't even have water or they turn on the gas. I saw one particular video, a person was turning on their tap in the house. They, they put a, a, a match, a flame underneath the tap and the thing explodes natural gas coming out of there. So welcome to modern civilization. But Vedic culture was actually civilization. People had, they respected nature and nature provided everything. But because people are not God conscious now, and they are more like uh, conscious of what their senses and mind tell them at every minute. And therefore they've created all of these things. It says that in the year 1850, uh, there was some kind of evaluation given that during that time, 95% of the items available for people on the marketplaces were considered to be necessities, such as food, clothing, med medical supplies, or even uh, more subtle things like education, housing. Now, and 5% was considered to be extra. Now you have the opposite. You have 95% of the stuff that's on the market is just useless. You don't need it. <laughs> you can live without it. In fact, you live better without it. And 5% uh, is the necessities. And so people you'll see in our society, there's always newer and newer things in the United States of America. You have the patent office. The patent office is a particular institution by which they uh, give a sanction to a new product and a, which allows that to be in the marketplace. 
and has to go through this approval system. And so one of the recent statistics is that every, every week, 250 new items come before the patent uh, office. They're always making something new, something different to make money, some gadget like this. Prabhupada said, now they have electric toothbrush, you plug it in, the thing moves by itself and then you can brush your teeth. <laughs> You're too lazy to move your hand up and down with a regular toothbrush. And even that was a creation before then, they used to have um, societies that were developed, they would use eucalyptus twigs from trees or tree or uh, twigs from cherry trees. I remember when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, that's what we had. We would have eucalyptic twigs and cherry twigs. That was our toothbrushes. We didn't have any toothpaste. We didn't have any. And that was considered to be a, a luxury. <laughs> it actually worked and it was less, less exploitation on the environment. And when you were finished it, you just throw it away. And there's no big waste, no big piling up in your bathroom. I travel around the world and sometimes I go into places, they, let, they allow me to stay at different houses. I open up, I go into the bathroom and there's like, the medicine cabinets are just piled up with different sprays and lotions and creams and this and that and it's like, you know, it just boggles your mind when you look at it. <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> so, and there's always new things on the market, and therefore the earth is suffering. The earth is getting exploited. You go into stores and you see tons of stuff piled high into the ceiling that are for sale. And people don't need it. It's all due to raping the earth. Oh, so this is modern, so-called modern civilization. It's because people don't understand the goal of life. They think the goal of life is to have more and to do more and to get more. <laughs> and to, that's why we say sometimes in the, mode of pa in the mode of ignorance, a person will think, hmm, if I can get something, and I can do something, and I can be something. That mode of ignorance is if I can get something, and I can do something, and I'll be something. Mode of passion means if I can do something, and I can get something, and I can be something. And the mode of goodness says, if I can be something, and I can do something, and then I can get something. You see how the modes are different. And the, the mode of ignorance is about character. And the other modes is about doing or being, uh, doing or getting. And so this world we live in now, Prabhupada says the mode of goodness is conspicuous by its absence. When people are simply being exploited every day, they live in houses, which they call apartments, Sometimes there's no air in there. <laughs> Sometimes it's boxed up and you can't even breathe <laughs> because there's no windows. <laughs> Maybe you got one little window if you can open up. And then if you do, if you live in the cities, there's so much noise <laughs> coming from traffic and smog coming into your, and then uh, <laughs> it's just, we, we are so dysfunctional in our lifestyle and we think we're okay, that's the problem, that uh, the whole society is going to hell, aesthetically, morally, what to speak of spiritually. So the only solution is Krishna consciousness because when, you, when you're Krishna conscious, you know how to live. When you're Krishna conscious, you know what to do. When you're Krishna consciousness, you don't exploit people, you don't exploit the earth. It's like when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, you know, we, we were told you don't wear leather. 
because leather is the product of violence upon the cows. So we stop wearing leather. Um, we stopped eating meat because we understood that this, and it wasn't so much, it was from a health perspective that was also there, but it was a perspective of causing unnecessary violence upon another living entity in order to satisfy your senses. And so we have a society now that is, uh, as Prabhupada says here, margarine instead of butter, plastic instead of gold, silver, brass, and copper, and people don't even have places to live. And that's true. So the, the and this was this was written, you know, 50 years ago when Prabhupada was here. Situation is only ha, has only accelerated and becoming more and more degraded now. The value of money, I remember when I first went to India, one eight rupees used to be a dollar. That was back in the 1970s. No, 1980s was. Eight rupees to a dollar. Now it's what is it? 65, 70 rupees to a dollar. Dollars down, the rupees down. All the currency in the world. We used to have gold currency. We used to have valuable metals, silver currency, gold currency. Now, then they went to various types of alloys nickel and various types, copper, and then gradually they went to coins with cement in it. <laughs> and then they got rid of, then they had paper money that was backed up by gold. Now that's thrown away. Now the money became paper, with no gold banking. Now the money's plastic now. I'm here in the, the UK, in the United Kingdom in the London area. The money's made of plastic. The, the new issue that the bills is plastic. <laughs> it's plastic money. <laughs> it's not paper anymore. It's, it's pure plastic. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so um, because people are not God conscious, this is the result. The whole society is not going to hell. It's in one level of hell, and it's it's going down to another level of hell. So this is what we have, and then we see here, Arjuna. You know, he had an umbrella. Of course, the umbrella was used to to shade the Supreme Lord, but it had a handle made of jewels, lace, and pearls, all valuable things provided by nature. So oh, you can't even get those nowadays. Only those who have big, pow powerful positions in the world, they exploit all the natural resources and hoard it for them on their own selves. And it's becoming scarcer and scarcer. So the conclusion is that unless we become Krishna conscious, there's no no solution outside of Krishna consciousness, because you might say, well, let's go back to a more natural mode of goodness life, but people can't do that. It's just not possible. Everything is upside down. You know, everything has to collapse first before it can rebuild in a proper way, because society is so rotten. <laughs> From the beginning to the end, I, and I'm only giving a small little synopsis or a description of what the actual situation in the world is. It's much worse than that. <clears throat> much worse than that. You know, there's millions of people who can't even get food every day. And there's enough food in the world to feed everyone, but because of the demoniac governments, which are so greedy for power, position, and wealth, that they starve out and push out the small people, and therefore people are struggling, they're suffering. <clears throat> Prabhupada said, we don't have any problem with Maya. Maya is our friend. But because there are demons, and because there are demons, Maya has to serve the demons, and therefore 
the world is in trouble because there are so many demons in the world. 1972, <clears throat> Prabhupada said, this was in 72, you can hear it. He said, <clears throat> the demons are only increasing and they will continue to increase more and more as time goes on. <clears throat> and he said, and he also said around that same time, he said, in 50 years, this whole Western civilization will collapse. And it's already starting to collapse now. <clears throat> I'm here in uh, <clears throat> London, one of the more popular cities of the world. <clears throat> and they can't even get enough people to work anymore. People are not working, they're not going to work. <clears throat> and therefore, all of the many of the businesses are closing, many of the services are closing. People just don't go to work anymore for whatever reason. <laughs> they stay home and work, or they found the alternate employment, and therefore they are, they're getting money that way. Just like <clears throat> devotees come, and then it happened to me. I was flying in from India, <clears throat> and I landed in Heathrow Airport in, in London. And it took me two hours to get my suitcase because <laughs> they had no bag handlers. <laughs> they hadn't, didn't have anybody to, to take the bags off the airplane and put it on the, on the carousel for people to pick it up. And it's not just happened one time, it's like a regular affair now. People are waiting an hour or two hours for their luggage on flights. So things are collapsing all around because, because of one problem, as Prabhupada said, because people uh, think that just by juggling the material energy, you can improve it, you can't. You can't simply switch material energy around and expect that it'll work according to your a rearrangement. Material energy is Krishna's energy. Maya Dakshayana Prakriti Suyate Satyaracharam says it works under his direction. <clears throat> and when people exploit material energy, the material energy punishes. <clears throat> The, the living entities and also causes his shortages, famines, pestilence, and various types of calamities in the world because people are not God conscious. <clears throat> but they don't learn. They don't learn. All they have to do is realize that God is the supreme autocrat and is he who, to be, who, who has to be worshipped. And my connection with everything in the world is based on my relationship with God. If I have a, a regular connection with God through service to God, through worship to God, then everything will be provided. The Lord takes care of those who surrender to him automatically. <clears throat> That's, that, that is Krishna's statement, that he takes care of anyone who surrenders to him. <clears throat> this material energy is Krishna's energy. He calls it daivi, daivi prakriti. He calls it spiritual. <clears throat> Therefore, material energy, although it's given the definition as material, because it's always changing, it's still coming from the Supreme Lord himself. When you uh, carefully understand the progression of creation, you'll see that the elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, and sky, which are the basic elements of all material ingredients, are created by Krishna himself, <clears throat> formulated by Lord Brahma, and manifested through various uh, energies of the Lord, and that, that's the creation. But the ingredients that make up creation are created by the Lord himself. <clears throat> he is the source of or the foundation for material existence. And he is also the operating force too. He puts it into place. It works in a certain way. When we understand that the, this, the energy of the Lord is meant to be used in the service of the Lord, then that energy elevates one to a platform of satisfaction, happiness, and personal fulfillment. And ultimately, God consciousness. When we fail to do that, that same energy 
turns around and becomes the source of our, our suffering. Yeah. But people can't understand why they're suffering. It's obvious because they want the kingdom of God without God. <laughs> they want God's kingdom, but they want to kick out the king. <laughs> It's like if you, you walk into someone's house and say, all right, I'm taking over. The refrigerator is mine. I'm going to take over the bedroom. That's it. And uh, although you've been here, it's my house now. Forget it. You go, you know, you're a criminal. <laughs> You'll be arrested. <laughs> so people are being arrested by the laws of material energy and being punished by these same laws. But they, they can't see. Napanyapi napasyati. That's a statement from the Srimad Bhagavatam. People see, but they don't see. Napanyapi napasyati. They see, but they don't see. They see that they're struggling so hard, they're suffering, they're working so hard and getting very little out of their efforts, but they continue. <laughs> Well, you might say, well, they don't have any other choice. Yeah, that's true, because they don't look for any other choice. But as soon as they worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then whatever they have, then becomes a source of their personal enrichment and an opportunity to connect with Krishna in devotion, which awakens the soul's existence to higher, to its natural consciousness or pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness. So we get a little bit of an insight about how people live because they were God conscious, at least a large part, part, popular part of the population, nature provided everything. Um, if you go to the earlier verses in this particular chapter, especially verses number four and five, you see what, how Prabhupada explains in those verses, you know, why do we need factories? Why do we need all of these mills that, that are more like places where people just slave tires tirelessly for hours and hours and hours for just for a, a little bit of money that really is not even valuable. It's just a piece of paper. That's all it is. So, uh, so when someone says we're making advancement, just uh, Ask them, where are we making advancement? What kind of advancement are we making? Yes, we're making advancement. We're going to hell faster. <laughs> That's basically it. Now for the devotees, and this is also indicated in these early verses in this particular chapter, the vision is to live, live according to nature, to live more basic. And therefore, Prabhupada's vision for the future was you know, Van Ashram based on farm communities, you know, agriculture. He said, grow agriculture and provide enough vegetables and foodstuffs, grains, and then keep cows. Cows are second. Then you can have all of your economic uh, needs solved by, by land and cows. Everything is there. And then he said, uh, you know, live simply, spend time uh, cultivating the land. He said also grow, you, he said also make your own houses. And when I was in New Vendavan, Prabhupada was there in 1970, he sat down with the leaders there and he drew on a piece of paper with a pencil, a house that we should build for the residents of New Vendavan. And it was a simple little structure but it had enough to provide for a, a family of four. And it was meant to, for, you know, more or less economic or simple living. We called it the Prabhupada houses. <laughs> you can, I think they still have pictures of that somewhere. And, uh, and then he also said, you learn, uh, learn herbs. You know, study the science of herbology, extract from herbs medicines, and then you won't have to go to a doctor. Prabhupada said it, and it's a fact that every particular disease 
in existence and ones that the heaven we don't even know about can be cured by uh, nature's arrangement. Everything's in nature. When I was uh, visiting our new Taliban farm in, uh, in, uh, in Mississippi, one devotee there, he had started an herb business and he, um, he was showing me around the forest and pointing out the different plants and the different trees and herbs and saying, well, this is good for this, this is good for that, this is good for that. He knew practically every bush, every plant, every tree, what value it has in providing, you know, either things that support your natural health or things that cure you when you're diseased. And he created a business on it. It's there and today, it's called Blue Boy Herbs. It's one devotee named Dwi Buja. And he's, um, you can buy his tinctures. He, he makes the tinctures, added to the herbs, and then you have medicines. And that's what the, sci that's what the scientists do. They do the same thing, but what do they do? They add all kinds of chemicals and other things that dilute the actual potency. And they don't usually know what all the things are, how it's useful. And that's a whole science. Prabhupada said, learn that. You don't have to go to the doctors. Prabhupada tells how when he was a young man, uh, he said, I think he said he was about 30, 30 years old or something. He had a very severe toothache and he tried everything to cure it, but it wouldn't cure him. So one of his friends took him into the forest and they met this uh, man in the forest and this man could cure toothaches. And what did he do? He took a little leaf, a particular herb, put it on the side of the tooth. That's all, he just placed it there. And all of the germs in the tooth left the tooth and the tooth was back to, to normal again. There's no need to extract the tooth. Thomas talks about that in his own personal experience. So we have lost a uh, hold of our, our aesthetic, moral, and even day-to-day -day values that make up a normal lifestyle, or to speak of transcendence, which is a whole different realm of existence. Why? Because we because we, are, we have forgotten Krishna. We have forgotten the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we think we can make a civilization without him, which is not possible because he is the root. Another name for Krishna is called Mula. Mula means the root. He is the root of existence. Without the root, the existence is just, just some show. It's more like, If you take a flower from, from the ground, you take it away from its roots, you put it in water for a little while and it'll last, but after some time it dwindles and dies because it's away from the root. Now in the same way, uh, the human's culture is derooted from their relationship with the source, which is God, and therefore uh, there are so many problems. And here you see a little bit of an example. The Prabhupada's vision for the entire society is establish these farm communities, grow your own food. He said, if you grow enough food, then you have enough for the cows and for the residents. And then you can feed the animals too. And then he said, uh, you know, milk, milk and milk products are very healthy when taken in proper proportions. Milk is a miracle food. And now we have so many people claiming that milk is unhealthy, but there's no proof of that. What's unhealthy about the milk is that because they kill the cows, those cows that they know they're gonna be killed ahead of time, when they give milk, they, they, they put inside the milk the own, their own adrenaline, which is caused by the fear that they have. And they force the cows to give large amounts of milk in a short period of time. And then with three to five years, the cow is useless. 
Whereas a healthy, normal cow who's being treated properly and with proper care can give milk throughout its whole life. And cows can live up to 20 years. So, um, yeah. So we can go down the list and show uh, just how this civilization is. Uh, it's just cut off from its roots. And because it's cut off, everything that it does, it's like when you try to, uh, it's like when you try to do a mathematical equation and you have some complicated math to do, say you have some algebra, but you make some mistakes in the basic arithmetic at the beginning, instead of saying one and one is two, you put three. So you're starting off on the wrong premise, therefore everything else is wrong. <laughs> so because we have pushed God out and his, his way for us to live also, uh, I do so many problems. And it will never change. It'll only get worse until people again start to understand that the value of life is in relationship to the source of life, the Supreme Lord himself. And that Supreme Lord must be worshipped in devotion in order for, for one to connect with that person. So this is, uh, and simple living, uh, Prabhupada pointed that in that direction, he said, simple living allows for more time for worshiping and serving the Lord. We find even today devotees who are serious in their Krishna consciousness because they're plugged into this Western society, they don't have time for the necessities of spiritual life find themselves working hard or spending so many times maintaining the houses that they build or the apartments that they rent. There is this problem, this thing, this, that, this, that. But Prabhupada said, you know, these, these farm communities are particularly meant for our families in Krishna consciousness, those who are in the Grihastha Ashram. It's a great environment for growing children and teaching children. It's a healthy environment. Uh, I just came back from New Mayapur in France just a few days ago, and I was taking some walks around the property and I was feeling exhilarated. There was no cars around and we had just nice, fresh, clean air. And you know, I, was, I was thinking this is like medicine, simply just taking a walk in the environment of our farm community. And that's what it was like. You know. So nature, gods provide everything for the living entity, but we rejected it and we've created this civilization that is just, I don't know what do you call it. It's called, it's this problem said soul killing civilization. Kills the soul, kills the mind, kills the body. And people don't live long anymore. You know, they die of so many diseases. Cancer is one of the diseases that is the feature of Kali Yuga. So many reports of people dying from cancer. Cancer is a Kali Yuga disease. Because people don't live right, the cells in the body are not, are not working properly. When the cells get muted or they get um, you know, destroyed, by wrong lifestyles or bad food or water or stress, that's also a cause of disease. And then um, these cells mutate and they become enemies of the, of the body and that's, that's cancer. <laughs> now people, there's so many types of cancer nowadays. So um, the only solution practically Prabhupada said farm communities spiritually is to, uh, is to continue to spread the glories of the holy name of the Lord and to practice Krishna consciousness every day as much as we can and give that mercy to our friends, family members and others. And then that's happy life because it is, it's in line with the principles 
of reality. Reality is we are part and parcel of Krishna. We have an eternal relationship with Krishna. His body is maintained by Krishna through the external energy. And we don't have to worry, work so hard to maintain this body. It's easy to maintain the body, but because we we deviated away from the natural lifestyle that is given by God. We have to struggle in so many different ways just to maintain the body. And we spend so much time doing that also. Okay, there's a lot to be said. So the ultimate thing is, of course, this particular chapter, the very first the verses four and five are particular interesting, is that um, Back to back to the basics, simple living, high thinking. And this is Prabhupada said, 50% of my mission, incomplete. The other 50 is Vanashram farm communities, establish these. And then he gave a whole formula by which we should proceed, by which in, in which we can gradually build a lifestyle that is healthy. Uh, simple, uh, free from stress, and at the same time, so much time to devote to Krishna consciousness. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a wonderful class, and I'm sure there's going to be some questions, because um, I know I have some questions, so thank you for such an um, uh uh, a very uh, down-to-earth class bringing us back to uh, living life simply, as Sri Prabhupada said, and you just mentioned, a simple living, high thinking. We'd like to ask devotees if you have any questions, any comments, any clarification, please do either. You, you can raise your hand and I can call upon you so I know who you know, has raised your hand in, in order. And if you want to jump in, you can do that too. Maraj, um, my question, Maraj, is, as you mentioned, um, when you were ending your class, simple living, high thinking, and we see that not only in the material world, but even within the devotee community, we get caught up in the, uh, in the uh, rat race of technology in today's time. And how can we as devotees, uh, Maraj, be... Um, be careful not to be caught up because any new thing that comes up, we just go get it. And then we say, oh, it's Krishna's. It's, and then we use Krishna's name in vain, as they say, you know, oh, it's a Krishna service. Oh, it's a Krishna service. But then it's entangling us. It's making us lazy. It's making us dull. It's making us numb. So how can we as devotees be careful, Maharaj, that we don't get caught up in that rat race? Well, we have to see the difference between what, what we need and what we what we think we need. <laughs> so there is necessities and then there is extras. So the necessities are provided automatically by Krishna through the material energy. The extras is what we are fascinated by. Uh, obviously, we live in a society where communication is so much a big part of the society that if you don't have a cell phone or a computer, you can't function within the society. So where we find ourselves in a type of society that forces us to acquiesce to this type of lifestyle. And then sometimes we forget that you just like you know we have a computer so it works but we think well i have to have the latest computer or the latest uh, smartphone or whatever and then we get caught up in that and we think now we're making progress but we're just fascinated by these different gadgets I mean, for years, I had a phone that did two things, stored numbers and made calls. That's all it did. <laughs> it was, I could hold it in the palm of my hand. It was so small. 
And then somebody gave me one of these, you know, Androids. So I thought, all right, and I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. <laughs> so, but, you know, therefore, if we expect to function in this society and not be encumbered by these things, you'll find it's practically impossible. So Prabhupada said we have to really break from this society and create our own society. And that's simple living. So he said that for, for Grihastas, he said the farms are, are a requirement for children, for lifestyle, for health, and for, for spiritual life. Uh, and if for brahmacharis and uh, sannyasis, they're, they're more mobile. They can move from place to place and they can, they can visit the farms, but they can preach in the cities. So Prabhupada gave us a whole formula, but uh, we're not doing it. <laughs> we're doing it in small increments. There's something happened. It's like I was in New Mayapur and uh, Prabhupada, he gave his whole plan, plan for New Mayapur when he was here 50 years ago. And now they're just beginning. <laughs> they're just beginning. I have to give him, con we congratulated him to find it. They're finally moving on Prabhupada's vision for New Mayapur after having so many problems before then. Because if we don't follow Prabhupada's instructions, how we expect to get Krishna's mercy? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. You know, Prabhupada is not just saying things, he's representing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if we fail to accept Prabhupada, how can we expect Krishna to come you know, to get the mercy of Krishna. It's not possible. The mercy comes when you follow the instructions. And so Prabhupada said, yeah, for the, and this was, we said in the future, but the future has now become the present. And then he said, build these farm communities. And we have our new, well, we have Mumayapur's moving now in the right direction. We have our new Vrindavan. I mean, they also have their struggles. We have our Gitanagari, they're also moving in the right direction. But each of the farm communities still require more manpower and more, uh, uh, more of the ingredients that make up the lifestyle in the farm communities. One of the saddest and most ridiculous things is to live on the farm and work in the cities. <laughs> Prabhupada didn't want that. What's the use of living on the farm and working in the cities? If you're going to work in the cities, live in the cities. <laughs> Don't live on the farms. Well, you think, well, I want to live in a nice environment. But what about... Uh, what about using the environment in the proper way? So I don't want to criticize because there's, but ultimately uh, we're slowly coming to the understanding that we need to move in, a, in the direction of a more simple lifestyle. And there's, there are many devotees who are doing it independently within their own smaller groups. There's others that are doing it on a larger platform, and, and then there's a large part that's not doing it at all. I can see the value of it. But then on the other excuse is we have so many things going on that we don't know where to prioritize. But I think this is, this is the priority. 1977, February 14th. A room conversation with Hari Sari and Satchrup Maharaj. Just look up that conversation, February 14th, Mayapur. A room conversation, Satchrup Maharaj and Hari Sari with Prabhupada. And Prabhupada just laid out the whole thing. He did that in 1974 also in a Vrindavan with Sri Dainana Maharaj. Prabhupada told us what he wanted and how that would be, it would be a, not just a way of life, it would be a, 
a necessity as the Western civilization starts to crumble. <laughs> he said, there will be no alternatives. These are the future of, a, of the world, not only of our society, but of the world, he said. Krishna is called the Pharmacharya. <laughs> It's another name for Krishna. So yeah, um, and he said specifically for families, those who have children raising, he said the farms that will be required in order to develop, you know, Krishna conscious family life. Otherwise, we send our kids to public schools and they learn all bad habits. The food we eat, the air we breathe, everything, and the time we spend maintaining ourselves in these city lives, you know, it could be used for, for hearing and chanting, for associating with devotees. So it's not so easy to establish these simple living communities. It takes, you know, it takes a group of serious people who work continuously until it gets gets to a certain stage of development. Once it starts developing, then more people will come and then it becomes very neat. Then labor is shared, resources are shared. So um, we're, we're, we don't, you know, Prabhupada told us what to do. <laughs> he didn't just give us philosophy, he told us how to live too. Thank you, Maharaj. Any questions from devotees? Um, yeah, as, as you're speaking, Maharaj, it, it, it's, um, you know, when you were saying that it's, it's, it's a challenge in today's time because Kaliga is, is, is degradingly progressing and you're so caught up in this rat race that it's a challenge to even uh, be able to identify where we are caught in the rat race because we are also in it. So it, it is definitely a challenge that that we have to be. And, and I think you you also mentioned towards the end of your class that we that Krishna consciousness is the answer is to slowly uh, cut ourselves from the from the crazy rat race. <laughs> that was definitely a, you know one one. What I tell devotees now, and I've been telling them the same thing. Stay where you are, where you are now, but have a but have a plan as things start to fall apart more and more, to uh, go to a you know a farm community, and live. We have so many; these communities need support also. Too. We have Mayapur, you know Mayapur is developing slowly, but. You know, that's one area. There's so many places around the world where there's some attempt to develop Prabhupada's program, but it's just incremental. It's not really developed on a, on a large base. Thank you, Maharaj. I think, Rashi, you had your hand up. Would you like to ask a question? Yes, thank Sorry, you. Sorry, Father Bashi, what you? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just changed my name. Sorry. Um, thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for this class. Um, Guru Maharaj, I always reflect on Varnashram and how to possibly implement that now. And so my question is around understanding our Varnas. Um, how do you suggest we can understand our own natures and how can we help others to understand theirs in this world where it's a very Vaishya culture. We're all encouraged and rewarded for acting in, in ways that might be contrary to our nature. Well, if we do it ourselves, it's a little, we may get it right, but Prabhupada had a part of that plan. He said, establish Van Ashram colleges. Van Ashram College, he explains that in his morning walk conversation with Rita Nanda Maharaj, 
March 14th, 1974 in Vrindavan, where he explains that um, the Brahmins should be uh, uh, adverse or what we say, Brahmins should be equipped with all collective knowledge. In other words, all of the different activities that makes up the, the society's needs should be collectively developed by the Dominical community. And these Brahmins would teach how to rule, how to fight, how to give, how to plant agriculture, how to protect. In other words, they would teach the other two varnas. So Brahmins would be the teachers. Not that every Brahmin has to know everything, but collectively, everything is there within the Brahm Brahminical culture. And that was Prabhupada's vision. Now, Bhakti Raghava Swami has been working to develop that. And uh, so there's a police, he's going to be building a Vanashram college. And that's Prabhupada's first step in establishing Vanashram or understanding people's different swadharmas. Of course, swadharma means your material nature. When you engage it in Krishna consciousness, it becomes daivi vanashram, it becomes spiritual vanashram. And that's meant to serve Krishna according to your nature. And when you do that, then the service that you perform is actually what we say topmost quality because you're working according to your personal nature. But we can also learn things in the process of development also. And uh, using natures don't change so easy, but one can also, just like a, an emergency situation, a Brahmin can take the position of a Kshatriya. We have the example of Dronacharya. Dronacharya was a Brahmin, and so was his son Asvatama. They both became Kshatriyas because the need was there. But uh, that's, that's, again, emergency situation. So, but in Prabhupada mentions in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that it's the duty of a spiritual master to see, to observe the nature of his disciples and engage them in Krishna conscious according to that nature. He writes that. So he wrote that, you know, 50 years ago. <laughs> So that means evaluation, observation, evaluation, and direction. But our society was so developed based on the need of the society and not so much the nature of the individual. So we asked the different, we asked devotees to do these different services because they were available. Because people were available. They were given that service and because the need was there. But that has been the downfall. Therefore, if you, if you investigate clearly, you'll see that many people come to our movement. They stay for four, three or four years or more, and then they move on because they're not properly educated. They're not properly engaged. But these are the two areas that we are still lacking in education and uh, proper engagements. So that has to be there. And that's the purpose of the Banashram College or the evaluation from an expert spiritual master who will understand and guide his disciples accordingly. Thank you, Radha Bhakti Prabhu. Very nice question. Any questions from devotees? Any thoughts? Any clarification? Marja, um, a question that, that came up in my mind when you were giving, uh, well, when you were speaking during the class is um, laziness, which is such a prominent character, you know, uh, an interesting <laughs> debilitating character, I think, in, you know, as Kali Yuga is progressing, because we are so caught up in the rat race, we are so caught up in the craziness that we don't know, really understand what a simple living high thinking 
that it makes us lazy. Like literally, even to go to the temple, if it's a 20 minute drive, we think a gazillion mil million, 10,000 of whatever time. And so how can we overcome that laziness, Maharaj? Because that is seemed to be like another, I, I don't know if it's because of COVID because you know, people tend to blame it, oh, it's COVID. <laughs> So it got me lazy, but how can we get over the laziness, Mark? Because I, it seemed to be really one of the increasing problems. Well, you have to be aware that's what's happening. You're being forced into a, a lifestyle that makes you lazy. <laughs> and you have to counteract that. So collectively is to change the lifestyle, but Okay, before then, then individually, you have to compensate for that. So take walks <laughs> in the morning. Uh, go for Java walks in the morning or just go for a walk in the morning. Uh, you know, exercise, proper diet, proper rest. Uh, it's all laziness is will make you unhealthy also. We struggle with that. Uh, Marge, is beating up the mind one on one of the, the remedy? <laughs> beating the mind? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's in that's in the Bible time. It's in also in Prabhupada's spoken lectures where he quotes his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and one should beat the mind with shoes in the morning when they wake up and broomstick at night before they go to sleep. He said, then maybe you'll be able to control the mind because that's these are the two times where the mind is the most restless. And that's in the morning we chant. And so you see, when you're chanting, you see how restless your mind is in the morning. It's just the way it is. It's just the nature of the mind to be restless. Marge, during your class, and I tried to jot it down, but I, I couldn't get it. You were explaining the mode of goodness, passion, and good, and, and I'm, uh, I'm sorry, ignorance, passion, and goodness in like three steps. Can you repeat that, Marge, if you don't mind, please? This is some, somebody came up with this, it's not in Shastra, but it's actually correct. It says that the mode of characteristic of a person and the mode of goodness, how they think, is that if they, if they can uh, get something, then they can do something, and then they can be something. So getting is first. Mode of passion is if I can do something, then I can get something. Then I can be something. Mode of goodness thinks they're a little more on character building. So if I can be something, then I can do something, and I can get something. So it's the same three things, just changed in different sequence. So depending on the effects of the particular mode. But most people are in the mode of passion. Do, 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 do. Get, 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 get. The more I do, the more I get. More money, more this, more that, more, more possessions, more, 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 more. Then the artificial sense of thinking that you're actually developing comes as a result of that. <laughs> Just see how much I can do and how much I got. <laughs> Has nothing to do with character, though. Who do we worship nowadays? These people with wealth, that's all, with power, with position. Not people who are saintly. They're not given any credit in society. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for repeating that I now was able to catch the notes. Vrindavanath Prabhu, please go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for highlighting the uh, true state of society and how it's exploiting Mother Earth. And my question is a bit uh, like different today, Guru Maharaj. Like you mentioned that only solution for present situation is Krishna consciousness. But in current situation, everybody just want to enjoy and they just, it's becoming difficult that and they don't want to change their consciousness. And one side, we feel that Krishna only expectation from everyone is that uh, we come back to him by devotional service, serving him, spiritual master and devotees. But other side, it's free will of individuals. They would like to, like Krishna has given free will. So for me, it looks like with confusing state, like Krishna can of course make everyone devotee and then change the whole world, change the whole thought process of everyone. So everybody can come back to him. While other side, it's like he has given the free will and people don't want to change. So how to really bridge this gap, Guru Maharaj? Sorry, like this question next. Well, change means to, to hear from authorities. When you accept an authority who is an authority, and then you hear from them, you get the understanding of what is right and what is wrong. And then if you're intelligent, you accept it, and that leads to change. But if you're not intelligent enough to accept it, or you're too attached to your own way, then you have to go through the process of suffering. And when you suffer enough, maybe you'll change. So suffering is another, it's just the results of not accepting, you know, proper knowledge, proper authority. That's the way. So we have to hear regularly from, you know, the bona fide spiritual master, from Krishna coming through Shastra. That hearing process awakens understanding, and the understanding pushes you in a certain direction. Just like, you know, the other day I was reading, I was reading the Ramayan. And at one point, something came into my mind that kind of indicated something I needed to work on. It was, real, it was pretty much not spelled out so much in the, in the text I was reading, but it was a principle that was being um, touched on. And then I saw, oh, here's what I have to work on. Okay, so then I came, became aware of it. Now, what am I going to do? Am I going to go? Am I going to just ignore it? Or am I going to try to work on it? And if I have to try to work on it, I have to be aware of it. And being aware of it means I know how I'm, I have to somehow or other learn how to direct my attention to that more than I have been done before. So, so it's a it's a you know it's a step by step process that comes by hearing. All knowledge comes by hearing. But Guru Maharaj, like point is that devotee numbers definitely increasing in the current society, but still too less in terms of overall percentage. So why Krishna is not giving this? wisdom or intelligence to everyone that they just become maybe by who because people don't want to change in their own comfort zone. When Krishna they, says in the Bhagavad Gita, as you approach me, I reward you accordingly. The parent is trying to teach the children, but the children don't want to learn. They don't want to listen to the parent. <laughs> people don't want to listen to God or they don't accept the authority of God. So then they have to, if you don't accept the rule of the state, then you have to accept the rule of the prison house. <laughs> that's all. That's, that's the alternative. Punishment is the reaction for rejecting the, uh, the, the laws of God. But the books are there, 
everything is there. If people want to change, all they have to do is desire to change, but they can't even desire to change. Or even if they want to change, they don't know how to uh, desire. It's just, it's just, it's like a, da a dog chasing its tail. The dog's going fast and the tail's going fast and the dog continues to chase the tail. If the dog would just sit down and then his tail would lay next to him, he could catch it. <laughs> we stop running after material happiness, we can, then we can understand, well, there is happiness, but it's not chasing my tail anymore. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Maharaj, there was a question that I was supposed to ask early on and I completely forgot from one devotee and I'm going to go up and read it. R Rishabhadas, he said, Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, do, you, do we know any devotees or places where we can get plant treatment for tooth? Would like to try it out for sure. <laughs> Any treatment for tooth aches? Plants. I, and I, I, I think he's referring to natural, you know, like you're talking about the eucalyptus twig. <laughs> well, I'm going to see him in about 15 minutes. So I, I'll, I'll talk to him. <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a, you know, one of these questions that's going to open everybody's heart to devotional service. So. <laughs> And Mars, there's a nice post from Mamina where she said, Hi Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. So, all glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you. My learning from today's class is suffering has a purpose. And I'm so happy to be in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, suffering is there for those who can't learn in any other way. That's cold treatment, Maharaj. <laughs> it's Krishna's arrangement. Mm -hmm. He's, he created the material energy in such a way that you can't be happy here. That's his mercy. Thank you, Maharaj. Any questions from devotees? Any clarification? This is an amazing topic and a topic that I think, you know, we all struggle from day to day, especially as Kaliga is progressing. Mars, there's one question that, that just came to my mind is we see what's happening, we read what's happening, we watch what's happening. And at the same time, we were told, you know, not were, we are told in Bhagavad Gita, you know, to try at least to be equipoised in happiness or distress. And then we get caught up. So it's like, you know, we are told to be equipoise and happiness and, and distress and then we hear what's happening in the political world and the news and then we hear what's happening with Kali Yuga going crazy how can a devotee really be equipoised with all this bombardment mind it's like when he's it's when he sees it's just the movement of the material energy that's all you know it's it's like watching a theater play there's people who watch the theater or watch a movie and they actually get into the movie and identify with it. And they get affected by it. And then there's others who just see, oh, this is a movie, it's a drama, somebody created it. So, so they don't get they don't get involved emotionally with it because they know it's just some some fictitious thing. That's all. That's material energy. It's just, you know, what it is. <laughs> it's real. But you can only somehow or other distance yourself from the effects of material energy and stay, what we say, equipoise when you're, when you're in Krishna consciousness, because the consciousness is not within the duality of the material energy. That means you can, you can accept or reject based on what is beneficial and not by what happens within the ever-changing material energy. If you get sick, you have to understand, well, I'm not sick, the body is sick, but because the body is needed, I have to take care of it. 
But I'm not sick. I'm the, I'm the soul within the body. How can I get sick? I'm part and parcel of Krishna. But still, because it's connected with my body and the body is useful and must be taken care of, I have to deal with it. So you see the situation for what it is and you act accordingly rather than becoming upset or elated. If you read, uh, you can go to Bhagavad Gita, uh, uh, fifth chapter, verse number 20 in the in Bhagavad Gita. 520, Maharaj? Okay. Uh, I'm telling Brenda to do it. She's monitoring this. Brenda? Brenda. Oh, there she is. <laughs> okay. Someone want to read that? I'll read the translation of the Sanskrit. I, could, I like the Sanskrit. It's really nice. Let's okay. go back to that. Na parisya priyam prapya no duja prapa chapriyam stira buddhi or sam mudo bhamavid bhamani stira. Okay. Translation. A person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant who is self-intelligent who is unbewildered and who knows the science of God is already situated in transcendence. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Uh, go down and see what the purport says. Purport by Shri Prabhupada. The symptoms of a self-realized person are given herein. The first symptom is that he is not illusioned by the false identification of the body with his true self. He knows perfectly well that he is not this body, but is the fragmental portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is therefore not joyful in achieving something, nor does he lament in losing anything which is related to his body. This steadiness of mind is called stira buddhi, or self-intelligence. He is therefore never bewildered by mistaking the gross body for the soul, nor does he accept the body as permanent and disregard the existence of the soul. This knowledge elevates him to the station of knowing the complete science of the absolute truth, namely Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. He thus knows his constitutional position perfectly well without falsely trying to become one with the Supreme in all respects. This is called Brahman realization or self-realization. Such steady consciousness is called Krishna consciousness. Yeah, I think this verse and the explanations puts everything in perspective. Neither rejoices, on seeing, achieving something pleasant, nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant. That's the dearer aspect. Self-intelligent, he knows who he is. Unbewildered, he doesn't think he's the body. And he, by his practice of Krishna consciousness, he knows the science of God. Therefore, he's not under the influence of the material energy. So this is, you might say, this is a very high stage, but it's Krishna consciousness. <laughs> That's what it is. Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi, please go ahead, Mataji. Thank you, Anasuya. I really uh, like the pointers, and my question actually takes off from what you said about the rat race that we as devotees sometimes, you know, fall prey to. And uh, please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your divine lotus feet. All glories to the assembled devotees. I would like to ask this question as, as a way of uh, understanding how I'm supposed to help. I have a young lady who's very much caught up in this uh, rat race, so to speak. A uh, devotee lady chanting for 10 years, trying to practice Krishna consciousness, but very much affected 
this person has this that person has that that person has become they have got this position and now they have this, this nice service and they are doing this and they are doing that and she has such a hard time because she's so caught up with what others have and the thing is it's not like she has anything less she has a very caring very loving family who indulge her she can buy what she wants she can get all the beautiful clothes that she wants she can go anywhere she can spend as much as she wants but still it's not enough because always somebody has something better than her so and this goes way back to childhood nothing was good enough whatever she had was never good enough and on and on and on and on and on like this well the reality is she's identifying herself with the body and the things that you have or don't have as success she has no understanding of who she is as a spirit soul and where the where real happiness can be found she sounds like an ordinary person who is simply bewildered by the material energy but she's a devotee she's been chanting for 10 years now she's up for initiation actually they're waiting for her to get initiated and uh, but consumed with jealousy watching other devotees getting this and getting that i just tell her she's in maya okay guru what she's seeing she's seeing illusion as reality and she forgets about the reality because she's absorbed in the illusion <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept the humble obeisances of Lord Sri Sri Prabhupada. So following up on this example given uh, about this particular devotee by Sri Devi, um, actually I'm still now wondering, is she initiated then? Sri Devi Mataji said she's up for initiation. Um, so when a person like this becomes initiated, wouldn't Krishna help, you know, well, Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj said Krishna has uh, soft love and hard love isn't this person asking for hard love literally after they get initiated because they really have to now take spiritual life more seriously and not to connect so much to material i don't energy. think she, i don't think she's qualified for initiation no <laughs> <laughs> with that kind of consciousness how can you be she hasn't learned anything <laughs> if it's if it's the way you describe i'm assuming it's the way you describe or you you make a you inflating the actual situation no guru mara this is a genuine problem because they have come to me for counseling because it is causing such havoc in their uh, married life she's angry with everybody around her and attacking everyone thinking that they are not giving me recognition they are not doing this the temple is pointing to other people i should get recognition on and on and on and the poor husband is miserable he 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 desperately wants something to change well you're describing as the consciousness of a, a materialist that's what it sounds like Now, if she's been chanting for 10 years what is she chanting I can't get no satisfaction but I try and I try. <laughs> yeah. She actually needs uh, to lose everything materially and then maybe she'll wake up a little bit. I guess I'm I, I was afraid of that. <laughs> you just mentioned it. because yeah. when christian decides to show special favor to me just as she takes everything away you have now really beg you know, to come close to him now you have more people to be envious of instead of just a few <laughs> it's yeah it's a disease to mental disease for whatever the cause of the disease is attachment to the attachment to the temporary 
if you're attached to the temporary, you, how can you how can you practice Krishna consciousness? It's completely opposite. That was a powerful question, Shade, because I think it's a common issue that I also see and come across in the devoted community with, with, with some people. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, and I think the younger generation is more and more infected with this because they have grown up with instant gratification, instant everything. And so they have such an enormous sense of entitlement. You know, when we say things like we walk to school, we carried our backpacks and things like that, they look at us like, really? You actually walk to school? You know, they're just ushered in nice chauffeur-driven cars or their parents are their chauffeurs. They're picked up, they're dropped off, they're taken to activate. Everything comes on a platter. So how are they equipped for real life? Yeah, she needs to lose everything and then she'll wake up. There's no the way you that's the way you describe it. That's the only way I can say. I would have to meet the person and then see what what else about it hers could be can be opened up. But the way you describe it, I'm just taking it the way you describe it is that being spoiled and being jealous means that she has to lose everything, and then she, then she'll start to appreciate what she had before. Yeah. That's that's would be that's the only formula. <laughs> but I can tell her that, Guru Maharaj. I mean I'm her somebody friend. better tell her that or else she's gonna get it the other the hard way. I'm sorry? Somebody better tell her because she gets it the hard way she might she might actually uh you know have a an emotional crisis okay thank you we tell thank people you. one of the principles of krishna consciousness is satisfaction is to be satisfied doesn't sound like she's satisfied and it's amazing because Krishna has given her a wonderful family, a wonderful husband who dotes on her, provides everything. Very gentle, very compassionate, very kind, very caring, very loving. I mean, other women don't even have sometimes a person who will pay the bills and take care. He has got everything. Uh, well, when I come to Mayapur, you can have me meet her. <laughs> She's in Mayapur? No, Guru Maharaj. They are actually visiting Mayapur. They're from another place. No. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Something, some, some major... Calamity would have to come in her life to wake her up. It seems like. Thank you, Maraj. Any questions from devotees? Any um, clarification? Any thoughts on this really amazing uh, topic that I'm sure you know we all struggle every single day because Kaliuga is degradingly progressing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. If well, yes, Marge. It's going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> they say the darkest hour is just before dawn, but it's still got some darkness to come yet. Wow. Yes, Marge. Yes. Uh, Lord Chaitanya is ushering in the, the, the golden age, but before he does it, this particular civilization has to collapse first. It's at that point where they can't change. It can only collapse. That's the only way. It's gotten to the point where there's no possibility of actually natural change in this civilization. It's just too far gone. And the demons have too much power. And they're just pulling everyone into this 
abyss of suffering and struggle. So when it gets to a certain point, it'll collapse. The whole thing will collapse, and then there will be there will be a dark period for a couple of years until, and then that'll until that'll then that'll pass after some time. And Lord Satan is ushering all of this in. He's giving people the reactions of their sinful life, you know. The devotees are not meant to, to be in, to involved in that. They're meant to be the caregivers, the rescuers, the lifelines towards, you know, solutions. Thank you, Maharaj. Any other questions from devotees? <clears throat> Okay, if there isn't, oh, go go ahead, Prabhu. You want to say something, Prabhu? Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Obinsensis to your lotus feet on goes to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, I'd like to say something about laziness. Mataji, I think you <laughs> mentioned earlier on. Now, you know, we have a one common dic dictionary and we have our own dictionary as well. In my dictionary, word laziness is not there. <laughs> because I can't stand laziness. <laughs> well, Prabhupada was asked, is uh, laziness, um, let's see, he asked, yeah, let me see if I can get this right. Is, la uh, is laziness uh, in the mode of no, is is laziness? Uh, let me see this. Laziness in the mo is, is it in the mode of ignorance? Prabhupada said, "No, it's lower." <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes a lazy person, even in the material life. If you're lazy in the material life, they kick you out. <laughs> And Prabhupada tells the story of a lazy person. He says, uh, this is one little story where in one kingdom, the people were coming to the minister who was representing the king. They say, we, we can't work, but we need some food. We need a place to live. So one person after another, and they were all lazy. So he, came, he went to the king. And the king said, all right, build a big structure and you can make an announcement. Anyone who's lazy, they can come and live here and we'll, we'll feed him. So they built this big structure, many houses. And then uh, people were coming and the whole place got filled up. And the minister said to the king, well, it's all filled up. Then the king said, all right, set it on fire now. <laughs> So they set it on fire and everybody ran out except two guys. One guy said to his friend, he said, hey, it's getting warm in here. The other one said, that's all right, just turn over on the other side. And, uh, <laughs> and the, when he, this minister reported it back to the king, the king said, these persons are actually lazy, <laughs> feed them. <laughs> so people are lazy. But when it comes to their own personal interest, they're not. <laughs> but, but personally, I can't afford to be lazy, Maharaj, because I don't own anything. Because if I be, become lazy, means uh, time is mine, energy is mine. But I don't own anything. So why should I be lazy? And yeah, I'm, yes. always, I, I'm always short of time. Yeah. I never have enough time. So I... If I be, become lazy, then I, I'm more in, uh, more in the difficulty. <laughs> me, me too. But my problem is every time I try to get out of my laziness, people give me two more things to do. <laughs> You're lucky. The only one that gives you anything to do is your wife. I, I have a lot of people giving me things to do. <laughs> your wife's here right now. She's right behind me. 
So she's <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> so you're lucky. You only get once in a while something new. I get it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, I, I've been, I've been the busiest assisting her since morning. <laughs> She's smiling now. <laughs> so yeah, people will, are lazy only for their own personal interest, uh, for for anything. But when it comes to their own personal interests, and I use the word interest, they're not lazy. <laughs> But Prabhupada said it's it's not a demoniac quality, it's lower than the demoniac quality. He said the demons are not lazy. And the thing is, uh, our uh, tendency is not to lose anything, but be, being lazy, we, lo we lose so much. <laughs> yeah, the demons are in the mode of passion. Laziness is in the mode of ignorance. Yeah. And uh, an another thing is... Uh, that Prabhuji was talking about free will. As far as I, uh, as far as I know, there is there is no such a thing free will. <laughs> because if we yeah. have a free will, why we become ill? Why we well, become poor? Why we well, become tired? <laughs> Sorry, Maharaj. Prabhupada said you have free will to choose between Krishna and Maya. That's all. Yeah. If you choose Krishna, then you're free, and if you choose Maya, then you have uh, so many choices. <laughs> How you're going to use your, how you're going to use your time, but there, you know, so you choose one category or the other, and then that's your only freedom, the freedom to choose between my and Krishna. That's all. And only, only way I understand free will to become Krishna conscious, and to become free from cycle of birth and death. That's the only free will. <laughs> well, yeah, that's intelligence. <laughs> yeah. That's the goal. The goal is use your intelli your free will in an intelligent way and become Krishna conscious. Thank you Thank so you, much Mara. for the question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. There is a, a quote by Vrindavanath Prabhu saying that, I, yes, Aindra Prabhu mentioned that hearing process is fastest way to attain Krishna for lazy intelligence. For everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the hearing, the hearing is the basis of all of all of the angas in bhakti. When you hear, you can chant. When you hear, you can serve. When you hear, you can remember. When you hear, you can worship. When you hear, you understand. So everything is based on hearing. If you don't hear, how will you know what to do or how to do it? If you hear a little bit, then you, that's how much you, you understand. But if you hear regularly, then everything becomes clear. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Any other questions from devotees? Any other last minute comments, clarification? Maharaj, if there isn't, uh, would you like to end with one round of chanting, Maharaj? Or is it yeah.